In this example, I wanted to take a quick look at packed primitives and how they come in to LOPs. Let's open this up and see what we have inside. It's very simple. We have a network here that basically just randomly copies spheres, boxes, and tori to some points. And we have some animation on the points and we have random colors on the points as well. So when we go in to LOPs here, Let's go into our stage and we'll do a SOP import. We will bring in our simple example here. Now, what we see are some interesting things. We have a prototype here, which has basically the original version of our box sphere and torus. And then we have all these transforms here, which you should notice are in blue. What blue means in LOPS context and Solaris context is that these are instances of an object. So they're reusing memory, but they have individual transforms on them here. Uh, that means if this box changes, then all the other boxes should change as well because they're instance off of this. If we go into our, I believe it's our primitive definition here, and we go into packed primitives, we can see exactly what's happening. If I turn this on, the default is that it creates native instances. We have other things that we can choose to do here. If I unpack everything, they will become deinstanced, and now we see we have an individual geometry object, individual mesh for each of these. You'll also notice that the display color has basically been baked into the object now. We can go to transforms here, and let's take a different look between transforms and instances. So with instances, you'll notice, again, these are blue, showing they're instanced. Now when we go to transforms, we don't get the prototypes anymore. Now what happens is we basically have an individual transform for every single box that's in here. And then we have the mesh inside of the transform. So this works fine. It's not the most efficient, but it works fine if you don't have that many objects coming into your scene. If you have thousands and thousands of instance objects, you're not going to want to do it this way. You'll want to use either native instances or point instancer. And we'll get into point instancer uh, a little bit later here. So let's go back to our native instances here. And what we want to take a look at is we had random colors on here, and I want to take a look at how we can pick up the color information that was on those objects and how we can use that in a shader here. So we'll take a really brief pause here while we save the scene, and then we'll come right back and we will start bringing in colors here. All right, so let's go and put down a material library here. And inside we'll do a material X. Subnet will delete displacement out and delete that surface out. Put down a standard surface here. And then we need to connect to base color. We're going to use a geometry property value here. Make sure to set that to color. And the property is display color. Make sure to get the capitalization correct here and plug that into base color. If you ever forget what you're looking for in terms of attributes, you can always select one of the objects here and take a look. Here we can see it's listed as a prim variable named display color. So you can always verify and make sure that you actually have data coming in there. Right now we need to assign it. So what we'll do is assign the, I'm going to do this, I'm going to drag box in here, but I'm going to delete box and just say, give me everything. And the material path will be our Karma X material. It's going to go black in the viewport, but once we render it here, what we'll see is that color is coming in. 
And we can verify this by disconnecting our geometry property, doing something like changing our base color so we can see that the shader is getting applied. And then we can put that all together like that. Now let's pause this for a second, go back to our GL view, and let's change our import style. So that was native instances. Let's go into transforms. Transforms should be the same. We'll double check, go into Karma, disconnect. It's working just fine. We will go into unpack here. Now, when we unpack, everything still should be the same. Let's go ahead and verify again. Now, the one that might cause some issues is when you go into point instancer. Now, we'll get into this in a little bit. But you'll notice it looks quite a bit different here. So I actually want to assign the material here to the instances right up here. And when we select the instances here, what we're going to see is we don't have display color anymore. It's still using the old CD value. So when I go into our material, library here, I need to change this to make sure it's actually pulling in the right uh, prim variable. Now, if I go to Karma and Render, that's working correctly there too. And we can see that. Let's take a look at the Packed Prim's complex network here. It's not much different than what we had looked at before. However, we have many, many, many more prims here. And this would not be feasible at all to use transforms for all of these. It would just kill uh, your LOP session and it would eat up a ton of memory, especially if these were anything more complicated than what we're looking at here. So let's go ahead and we'll go into our stage and we'll do a SOP import. I am going to change this before we even bring it in just to make sure it doesn't kill our system. So in our primitive definition here, I want to make sure that my packed primitives are going to be point instancer. And point instancer works very much like copy to points. You have a point, uh, you have a point cloud which has attributes on it, and then you have instances which get copied onto those points and inherit some of those values to determine their orientations, positions, and scales, as well as other properties such as geometry color. Now I'm going to go and find our SOP here, which is the complex example. And you can see it was a very, very fast import. And I can't see any display color on here right now. And even if I render it, there's no display color showing. However, as I showed in the previous example, the display color is here. We're just not seeing it right now. So we can go ahead and do a material library. And I'm going to work fairly quickly here. We'll just do a mat x subnet. I'm going to delete that out. We'll put a standard surface here. And we need to get a property here. Now, when we look at the SOP import, this should be apparent from what we had seen before. Let me go dive up here. When we look at the SOP import here, what you'll see is we don't have, actually I want to go on the instances node here. We don't have display color uh, as a primitive variable. We do have CD though. 
but it didn't get renamed. And that's fine. We can totally work with that. We could either rename it in SOPS to display color, or we can work with CD here. All we have to do is know what we're looking for, and make sure we use it appropriately. So I want to change that to color, change that to CD, and plug that into base color here. Now I'm going to assign it this way. We'll just do an assign material and I'm going to assign it to the instances here. And I want to grab my karma material subnet here. And let's go ahead and render that. And you can see that we have inherited all the colors that had been assigned via points onto our instances here. Because we are using the point instancer, this is very, very fast. 